Hi folks, it's Digital Hunting Gear Guy. Just wanted to talk about some of the things you might want to bring to a maple seed to give you the highest chance for success. I'll go through some basics and then we'll get into some more advanced stuff that will uh, set you up um, to get the best score as possible, to, get to really pull the most out of the day as possible. If you want to, you can tough it and uh, suffer through your maple seed, but at the end of the day, no one really wants that. Most people just want to like take as much as they can from the course. When we ask people what their goals are, most people want to learn. They want to see what the result is of the training. And I think the, the best way to get that is to show up with good gear so you have a good time. So I'll go through some, some basic things first. Uh, first, treat it like you're going camping. So if you're going to go camping, what are you going to take? Well, you're going to take water. Uh, depending on the, on the temperature, you might take two to eight liters. So that's quite a bit of water. Uh, one of these is not going to do the trick for the whole day. You're going to be outside uh, in the sun uh, or even in the rain. You're going to need more than just that. You're going to need a lot more water. Uh, I've sucked back six liters in a day fairly easily. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's nice to have lots of extra. So bring lots of water. If you can, uh, bring cold water because that's uh, sure a nice treat when it's nice and hot out. Uh, the next, bring your own food. Maple Seed doesn't supply food, so uh, bring a main lunch and then bring lots of little snacks, little bars, little like things you can kind of eat on the go because when we do our points of instruction, it's like 10 minutes where you can watch us doing something and you can like get a little bit of food in you at the same time rather than because we don't really break for lunch and like stop and like have an hour lunch or anything like that. We do a working lunch. Everyone's like, we're teaching while, while we're eating. So, uh, so you got to like keep up. Uh, the next is like clothing and the best thing to do here is to have layers. You want to have like multiple layers. You want to have like your base layer. You want to have a, uh, what's really nice is a thin long sleeve shirt. Uh, typically when you're shooting prone, you're gonna have that elbow pushing into your mat and it kind of creates like a little divot. And if the, your neighbor, uh, if their brass starts coming over, it's going to want to settle in that divot and you're going to get a hot piece of brass on your elbow. So if you've got a thin long sleeve shirt taken care of, that's not going to be a big problem, right? Uh, a hat is good. Uh, something that's got like a, a decent brim on it. Uh, if you are prone to burning like I am something like a, a sun hat, something that's got a, a brim all the way around cowboy hat kind of a thing. That's uh, that's even better because that's going to keep the back of your neck from, uh, from burning. Uh, if the day has any possibility of rain, uh, it will rain. So bring rain gear, good rain gear. That's uh, that's going to keep you dry. So that's like a jacket and pants, uh, and a hat or hood. That's, uh, that's going to keep you nice and dry. Um, mosquito spray, if you're in an area where there's mosquitoes, typically ranges are kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Some of them are near standing water. So, uh, mosquito spray and then, uh, uh, sunblock, sunblock. Definitely. If, uh, if you're going to be out in the sun all day, <laughs> you need to keep yourself from burning. Um, lip balm is really handy. So something like this again, on a high wind day, you, your lips will burn like crust right up and you'll just be hurting for days. So you might as well just get it right for the first time. Uh, like a folding uh, camping chair, something that you would take camping, just something that's nice and compact, easy to pull out, nice and comfortable so that you can take a load off, watch the points of instruction while you're sitting and uh, eating and bombing up your mags and all that kind of stuff is really nice. And then uh, the other stuff, uh, some Kleenex or some, if you have any joint pain at all, ibuprofen or Tylenol or, or something that you can use to stop the pain. <laughs> Uh, baby wipes are really nice if you're dirty, if you're like really crusty, or if you got to use the uh, porta potties. That's like a, like a pro tip there. Shoes, not flip flops, not flip flops. <laughs> you'll get some brass on your feet, or you'll step on something, or something like that. So some nice durable shoes. Now let's talk about what you need for the shooting portion of the day. Now um, the first thing, fairly easy, notepad. Uh, pen and pencil, some way of like taking notes, right? We will give you a pen. We call it a Traeger trainer. It's not a pen for us, uh, but uh, bring a pen anyways. Uh, no, a small notepad is great. Something that you can take notes of, something you find interesting that you want to take note of and uh, and just make sure you remember. That's, uh, that's a great way of remembering. Uh, a shooting mat. So um, for a shooting mat, the one, the, the most ideal one, that's like the best price to value. Cabela's puts their shooting mats on sale every once in a while for 59 bucks. Get one of those. They're humongous. They're not great for like hiking in the back country or anything like that, but they're nice and wide. They're com they're very comfortable and that th kind of thing would be fine. If you can't get one of those, a yoga mat or a sleeping pad, something that's the thickest as possible. Because keep in mind, you're going to be prone for most of the morning. That means your elbows are going to be pressing down. So it's mostly you're trying to save your elbows and make sure you got nice something nice and comfortable to sit on uh, for the morning. Uh, and to lay on for the morning. Some people will use like a blow up shooting, uh, sleeping mat. Those have the cushion, but they're also kind of like 
wobbly, uh, which isn't going to be great for scores. So ideally something that's gel or something that's uh, that's foam or something like that. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't give you that bounciness to it. Um, ear protection, eye protection is mandatory. Uh, I like earplugs uh, because I can get right down on the rifle. But one thing I don't like about earplugs is I can't really hear things around me. That's where like uh, e-muffs, like electronic muffs, something that's got like a microphone on it that, uh, that you can hear people with is really nice. Uh, some of the nicer sets, the sound is going to be a lot more natural and you can be able to hear people a lot better. But suffice to say, ear protection and eye protection, some safety glasses are absolutely required. Now next, uh, you'll need ammunition. Um, bare minimum for, for something like this is going to be 215 rounds. So bring double that. That's the safe thing to do. Bring 400 rounds of, uh, of whatever, uh, whatever cartridge you're using. Typically 22 LR is what we're using for these things. You want two to four magazines. Um, you only need two. But um, what if one of them starts jamming on you? What if you find out that one of your brand new mags isn't that good? It doesn't drop free. It would be nice to just take that one and put it to the side for the day, right? And then just use the other reliable ones. So try to bring four magazines of at least five rounds each. Ideally, your magazines are 10 round mags. But if you've got, if all you've got is fives, so that's, that's all you got. Um, and in terms of the rifle, um, the most ideal rifle for this kind of thing is something that's reliable, scoped, semi-automatic, magazine-fed 22 lr So something like a Ruger 10-22 with a scope on it is, uh, is going to be ideal. Uh, you're going to want like a USGI sling, something that's got uh, like a cam buckle on it and the H buckle or the tri-glide at the end. If you can't get something like that, um, you can get a loaner from us for the day kind of a thing. This is, this is like a, one of our loaner slings here that we would offer to people to, to use for the day. Uh, those are fine as well. Um, when it comes to the rifle, if you do use a Ruger 1022, mount that scope as far forward as you can because this rail does not really give enough room for you to get your head on there and get your head as far forward as is comfortable. So you need this scope as far forward as possible on most uh, Ruger 1022s for most people. If you um, mount it, try going prone at home and get a sight picture and see how your eye relief looks, you probably need to move your scope as far forward as possible because that's just how these things are uh, are, are built. If you don't have a semi-automatic MagFed 22, uh, there are other options. Uh, they're just more challenging. So yeah, you can do this kind of thing with uh, an iron sight semi-automatic. You can do this kind of thing with an iron sight bolt action uh, 22. It just ramps up the difficulty and it adds to the mental load that you have to um, accomplish while you're while you're shooting which for some shooters is going to be too much it's a lot to think about in some of our uh, mqts and some of the shooting tests that we do you have to think about like how many shots you took when you need to reload which target do you need to go after now three three four two two three three it's a lot to think this sounds easy like me describing it to you right now but as you're shooting this in a match it can be a bit much so that's where it's nice to just be slung up in a semi-automatic 22 send the rounds as they're ready uh, with a bolt action 22 it's still doable but every time you run that bolt you have to reacquire your natural point of aim it's going to be a little bit harder it's going to be a little bit more difficult to uh, to get on target um <laughs> if your firearm only has one five round magazine or is a single shot or something like that, um, contact the shoot boss for your event and they will uh, potentially bring a loner rifle out for you. In fact, that's what uh, that's what this one's for. This is a loner rifle that, uh, that we loan out to attendees to use at the events. Uh, it's been sighted in, it's got uh, a decent reliability and uh, many people qualify riflemen using these loner rifles every year. So if that gives you enough information to make your first Maple Seed a success, uh, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, hop onto the Maple Seed Facebook uh, page or email your shoot boss with any questions you have. Uh, better to ask before and be prepared than show up and find out that, uh, that it's not really what you expected. Thanks for watching.